Nowadays, propellers are taken for granted. But how do they work? It's important to know, because they produce effects that influence aircraft behavior and the way we fly them. Remember that the Wright brothers appreciated that the basis for propeller design was the same as for wings, the subsonic aerofoil. When moving through the air, it generates a total reaction, which enables an aircraft to fly. This is best explained by looking at it in terms of the lift produced by the aerofoil and the drag created by its resistance to the air. If the angle of attack is increased, more lift is generated, but at the expense of increased drag. Maximum lift being produced at the point of stall. A wing is usually at its most efficient at a relatively small angle of attack. In very simple terms, a propeller or air screw is really two or more rotating aerofoils set to pull the propeller through the air in the same way as the thread of a screw pulls it into wood. During flight, its motion will comprise rotational velocity and forward velocity. With the propeller stationary, any forward velocity is that of the aircraft, the true airspeed. But a rotating propeller accelerates air and produces the induced flow. The sum of the TAS and the induced flow is the total inflow. Now the direction of the relative airflow can be plotted. But we know that to work effectively, aerofoils have to be set at a small angle of attack. The angle between the cord line and the plane of rotation is known as the blade angle or pitch of the propeller. The rotational velocity at the blade tip is faster than near the hub. And if the pitch remained constant, the angle of attack would increase towards the blade tip, possibly causing it to stall. So the blade is twisted to maintain a constant angle of attack. This is a fixed pitch propeller. It generates a total reaction in the same way as a wing. We know that the amount of lift generated varies with the angle of attack. It also varies with the speed of the airflow. The faster the airflow, the greater the lift. And vice versa. So in order to maintain level flight, when pilots alter an aircraft speed, they also have to adjust the angle of attack to keep the lift constant and equal to the aircraft's weight. But whereas the speed of the airflow over a wing aerofoil is dictated by the speed of the aircraft, the airflow over a propeller is governed by its rotational speed which is much faster than the forward velocity and virtually constant. Consequently, changes of forward velocity have very little effect on the speed of the relative airflow. What is affected by changes of forward velocity is the angle of attack and the consequent strength and direction of the total reaction produced. Remember that the total reaction produced by a wing aerofoil can be resolved in terms of lift and drag and that the penalty for increased lift is increased drag. With the propeller, the total reaction is resolved as thrust, the force needed to overcome the drag of the airframe, and the propeller drag, or torque, which balances the power output of the engine. The penalty for increased thrust is increased torque. When a propeller is turning at a constant speed and the aircraft is stationary, the angle of attack is big and large amounts of thrust and torque are produced. As the aircraft accelerates, so the angle of attack decreases with a consequent loss of thrust and torque. This continues until the reducing thrust equals the increasing airframe drag when the aircraft has reached its maximum speed. The principal limitation of fixed pitch propellers 
is that there is only one speed at which they work at peak efficiency. This propeller is a fine pitch propeller, giving good performance for takeoff and climbing, but a relatively low maximum speed. By increasing or coarsening the pitch, the maximum speed can be increased, but there are practical limits to the size of the blade angle that can be used, since too large an angle might mean the propeller could be stalled when the aircraft is stationary or moving at low speeds. Torque would be high, so RPM would be low, and because the direction of the total reaction is further from the direction of flight, less thrust would be produced, and acceleration would be too slow for takeoff from normal airfields. The pitch of this propeller You are now unmuted. So hopefully you are able to understand uh, the different terminologies which I'll show back. Right now we are in blade element theory. Okay. So uh, the different one minute. So the uh, last last what we saw was we saw the different terminologies here. Okay, so we saw how the inlet velocity V naught that is propeller is rotating like this, and the velocity of air is in this direction, and then there is the rotational force of the shaft so that is v2 which is pulling it towards like this and the velocity is facing as v0 the incoming air velocity the the uh, the, the the resultant velocity is in this direction as v1 okay the angle between uh, the pitch angle and the angle formed between uh, the resultant is your angle of attack okay so this angle of attack varies with increasing velocities okay so if, if if your flight speed is increasing even this will increase so therefore angle of attack will increase okay and uh, so how different is your uh, propeller compared to your wing is what we'll study in blade element theory okay um, any doubts anyone so far Any doubt so far? Or you didn't understand any of the terminologies so far here? So I'll take that as a yes and we'll move forward. So, uh, a little recap. What did we see in uh, momentum theory is that we'll consider the propeller to be an actuator a small cross-sectional area where there is a step increase in pressure okay if the airflow is passing through it pressure will increase by a step uh, so from uh, p2 to p3 and then at the exit conditions the inlet and exit conditions the pressure is same and velocity throughout will be uniformly increasing okay uh, this will give a very idea on how much what is the diameter that you can use to create a certain amount of thrust so that will give you the uh, momentum theory and that is what the momentum theory will give you whereas your blade element theory the difference between those two is that your blade element theory will consider the angle of blade will consider the blade is present as a propeller and then we'll see its impact so what if it, it is a, is it a two blade uh, propeller or is, it, or is it a three blade propeller all that uh, consideration is taken into account okay so unlike actuated disk theory or momentum theory blade element takes the shape of a blade into account okay like what the point previously i said the blade is divided into small sections which are handled independently of each other 
so if you take one second the blade is divided into small section so here if you take consider this to be one blade you cut them into small elemental areas like this okay one assumptions what you make is that the impact of this blade on the next strip is nothing i mean there is no impact of this blade so let us say there is some force being generated because at this cross sectional area this cross sectional area will not impact the next one so that is the second point and so the blade is divided into small sections which are handled independently of each other okay each segment has a cord a blade angle and an associated airfoil characteristics so each of this will have its own cord radius and the airfoil characteristics so like what uh, what is the type of airfoil that you are using and all those okay and um, blade is divided into a number of smaller section along its length and acts as independently of the surrounding elements so uh, it is a repetition of this one okay so works well for lightly loaded two to three blade propellers except near the hub so by using blade element theory uh, the results what you can obtain is very good if you consider the propeller to be a two blade propeller or a three blade propeller so this is a three blade propeller uh, if you have a two blade propeller even that that will agree with the blade element theory the results whatever you obtain in blade element theory are very good in two blade and three blade and lightly loaded so not very huge loading and last point was except near the hub so as and when you move towards the hub the uh, uh, the the blade element theory is not that applicable because uh, uh, the velocities are almost uh, reducing and and uh, uh, one second yes so yes so the velocity is almost nearing zero and therefore near the hub it is not that applicable so just like how in a momentum theory how the lift and thrust is not generated not momentum theory in general the lift and the thrust is not generated near the hub and tip of the blade on a similar condition here also hub you won't have any uh, thrust produced okay at a given radius r the circumferential distance between two successive blade is called spacing okay the distance between this blade and this blade is called a spacing and denoted as s why the length of the blade section between the leading and trailing edge is called cord so this distance from the hub to the tip you call it as a cord and this is called as spacing okay so when you design a propeller what you need to take into account you need to take into account the ratio s by c so spacing divided by the cord so since the s by c for two and three bladed propellers is much greater than unity uh, it's much greater than unity meaning the length of the cord okay is very small compared to this uh, the spacing between a circumferential area okay 2 pi r or the given radius so circumferential distance between these two is very large compared to the length of the cord so in that case it is it is it is it is not at all unity it is much than uh, much higher than unity so therefore uh, it justifies this theory in that situation okay whereas if you have uh, the s to be very small okay this length is very small but this is very big which will cross uh, which will which is lesser than a uh, unity then you get something called as a cascade okay so this is called a cascade blading or your compressor so if you see your compressor or turbine you see th the distance between two successive blade is very small okay so the distance between two successive blade is very small and the length is much higher compared to that so therefore s by c will be less than unity or equal to unity also so in that case you can't use the blade element theory okay is what this statement is about any doubts
so the foundation of this theory is found in classical airfoil and wing theory so i think you are uh, you have seen your aerodynamics uh, the lifting line theory which is how uh, i mean you have seen just uh, casual airfoil no, no, normal airfoil and how a lift is generated in it and you have seen about uh, cl and cd what is cl and cd okay so it it all it makes use of the same thing but only thing what you need to consider is the angle okay because the velocity is not being faced by the propeller blade uh, at, uh, directly to it because it is at an angle so th only that consideration you take but everything else you will follow the same classic airfoil theory okay a propeller is spinning twisted wing with angular speed omega is equal to 2 pi n so the angular speed of the hub we know it is 2 pi n and we make use of r r to which radius it is okay with its span wise element in solid rotation the rotational speed increases linearly with the distance from axis of the rotation r hence the need of twist so like the video you saw when we began first the speed at the tip is at a very high velocity compared to the speed at the root okay because why is that uh, why is that why is that the case why is the speed at the tip is much higher compared to speed at the root because if you draw a circle about uh, let's say from this point if you draw any circle along any of the chord length the radius of the circle will increase okay so therefore the distance covered as you go uh, about the chord okay so if you take any point from here the distance covered by it will be very long so since velocity is distance by time so at the very same time you are uh, let's say if this is coming at one rotation at the very same time this will also cover one rotation but the area uh, so, uh, sorry but the distance it covers is very huge so therefore velocity is distance by time so from this point to another point will you come back so the distance this covers with the very same time so for one second let us say it is coming from here to here this should come from here to here so that should cover another greater distance so therefore uh, that is why the the velocity at the tips is very high compared to the root or the hub okay and because of the very same reason like how the uh, how the angle of uh, attack is dependent on this velocity so if the incoming velocity is more at the tip and the angle of attack is greater there then your uh, airfoil then your propeller will stall so to avoid that you have got the twist so when you have the twist here the velocity sorry that when you have the twist here that twist will compensate for the angle of attack come to the main diagram so some of you are not able to come one second what exactly we take spacing sir and why okay uh, what exactly we take spacing sir and why I think portion what I understand from what you're saying is that you're asking what is the significance of this spacing? Is that it? Portion, if you can hear me, is that what you're asking? What is the uh, okay? So where are we? Okay, if you guys can tell me what is the difference between this and this. So this is just a three blade propeller. This is let's say about um, 15 to 20 blade rotor. So like I said, S by C. S by C in here is greater than 1 and S by C in here is lesser than 1. Correct. So 
when the spacing is very huge what happens you'll allow a huge mass of air to flow in in between that uh, rotation let's say let's say if you consider a uh, imaginary line here okay uh, so if i draw an imaginary line here for each rotation in this gap or in the spacing you try to push air through it okay so that is what is creating your thrust that is what is creating your thrust because of the gap between the spacing because one blade is pushing over the other and you are and you are sending much of the uh, air air in between those but in case of this even here you are spending you are sending much of the air but here you don't have thrust into account okay so here you have thrust into account because you need forward velocity to go but whereas in a cascade blading when the space is very small you are pushing the air but even while pushing the air you are constraining the area okay so by constraining the area what happens your velocity uh, your velocity will increase so depending on what type of uh, turbo machine it is so if it is a turbine uh, again even turbine is a cascade turbine and compressor is also a cascade compressor so depending on what type of uh, machine it is like if it is a compressor or a turbine you will again do the action of compression or the action of expansion so depending on it but here what is important is to generate thrust so if you have too many blades here the mass flow rate will reduce because much of the area is actually being occupied by the blade itself okay so that is the difference between uh, spacing so what is the impact of spacing okay so if you want to produce thrust you do it with s by c being gr greater than 1 but if you want to do uh, the action of compression or expansion you take s by c less than 1 okay i hope that you had some understanding of it so there is no much derivation here if you just understand uh, the diagram we just resolve it like how we i mean you just uh, directly write this is the uh, this is the thrust that is being produced and this is the torque that is produced okay one thing if you noticed in the video the man what he was saying he said in an actual flight uh, or or if you take uh, an airfoil as a wing what you get is if this is an airfoil going uh, as a wing okay so the parameters what you get is lift and drag okay so lift and drag are the parameters which you face in an airfoil when it is used as a wing as as much as you increase your uh, lift the corresponding uh, the corresponding uh, uh, the corresponding force would be drag okay but when you use your airfoil in a propeller you'll have your lift as well as your drag and then you have two more components that is your force or also called as thrust and opposing this thrust you'll have what is called torque okay so what is torque so torque is the uh, action of uh, or the tendency to rotate correct so the tendency to rotation is called as torque okay but torque is not a force okay torque is a moment so torque is force into a given direction correct but this figure what you draw is actually for a force diagram this is a, not a moment diagram this is a force diagram so therefore if you take tau as a torque this element will now be d uh, d tau divided by r okay so if r is the radius if r is the radius from the point of hub this radius since you need to keep everything in terms of force but torque is a moment so torque will be given as force into the given radius so if you then then you divide it by the given radius you get torsional force okay so before that we'll see what are the parameters v naught is your incoming air velocity okay uh, and you have got the uh, beta 
that is the pitch of your pitch of your uh, propeller blade i hope you remember pitch pitch in a propeller pitch in a uh, pitch in a propeller is the distance moved forward for one complete rotation is called the pitch just like how in a screw thread if you turn a screw for one complete rotation how much it moves forward that is your pitch so the angle between a horizontal and and the pitch is your uh, geometric pitch okay that will reduce to your uh, resultant angle so when you have the resultant velocity will now be v not and then other rotational force that is omega omega r with these two velocity the resultant force is like this okay so if you take from this point to this point this is your geometric pitch but this point to this point will be your actual pitch so how much distance it is moving okay the angle subtended at this point you take it as phi or called the helix angle and the angle between the relative uh, or the resultant and the geometric uh, pitch this is your angle of attack okay so when you when you when you when this varies when your flight speed varies your angle of attack varies and that in turn varies your phi okay helix angle hope you understood this image this part so far so if you have understood this we can directly dive into this any doubts Just try and refresh, Sanjana. But uh, don't refresh on the same page. Refresh it on some other page. Let's see if you come, if you can come back. Okay. So now, if this is your helix angle, the angle subtended between your thrust as well as your lift. is also your helix angle phi okay so the angle here is phi now if you take if you try to resolve this df if you want to find the total amount of thrust so this is given as so this is what opposite so your drag is in this direction but if you put it if 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 you if you put if you put it in the other direction it will be negative okay so with that case if you want to take the whole df df will be equal to so you'll have two components one is cos theta and sin theta so the cos component for this df will be dl so dl cos phi since dd uh, since this uh, drag is negative on the other axis minus d sin theta why is it minus because for this phi this is opposite and for this phi this is adjacent and definition of cos is adjacent by hypotenuse so this is uh, your hypotenuse and uh, sin is opposite by opposite by hypotenuse so hypotenuse is df so dl cos phi minus dd sin theta the overall thrust what is generated is given as like this okay and if you want to find the torque uh the torque that is obtained so do d tau by r like i said it is not of it is a moment so therefore by r so that r has gone up so this will be dl sin theta plus dd cos theta this is common to both of it here now this is positive okay so at this angle uh one second cos theta like i said these are you are using so that you can compensate for the momentum this is not a momentum this is a force that's why you take it as d tau by r and then what you know dl by dd so again you'll write it in terms of cd and cl so cl is what cl is your coefficient of lift and cd is your coefficient of uh, drag so coefficient of lift is given by lift divided by dynamic pressure so here if you take lift as l divided by dynamic pressure is half rho not v square half rho not v square along the chord so along the chord is c okay if you consider the whole chord 
it is C. So therefore DL is equal to half rho naught VR square into C into CL and the drag is half rho naught v, uh, VR square along the cord into CD. Okay. So the lift and drag forces are proportional to lift and drag coefficient. The lift and drag forces are proportional to lift and drag coefficient with the product of relative dynamic pressure and the local cord length as the proportionality constant, namely these two. Okay, so what I said, it is the same thing written here. Now coming to propeller efficiency, the definition of propeller efficiency, what we know is, is thrust power divided by the overall kinetic energy. Okay, so thrust power is what? Df into the inlet velocity so df into inlet velocity but here you don't have kinetic power so the the power compensating for the overall df is your torque so therefore angular velocity into the torque is your uh, is your kinetic energy or the overall generated energy okay so this is your blade element theory and then we'll see some of the sorry some of the idea or demerits in blade element theory so the basic blade element theory however does not account for the included sorry induced angle of attack that is caused by 3d trailing vertices okay so your blade element theory is considered only on a 2d sketch okay it doesn't take your 3d trailing vertices into account so vertices is what because your flow is in 3d motion uh, there are vertexes created vertexes is nothing but uh, let us paint so a different portion let us say this is the blade a different portion there are vertexes created like this okay at different points so this is not taken into account okay therefore in a strict sense propeller blade performance in three dimension is constructed from superposition of sectional 2d performance okay so you are just trying to analyze the overall 3d by superimposing on a 2d uh, two dimensional sheet okay the geometric pitch angle that is pitch here the geometric pitch angle beta is shown in the figure it is the angle that the blade element got the blade element bracket in cambered airfoil measured from zero lift line makes with respect to the plane of rotation so for the if you, this is your plane of rotation and this is your cambered angle okay so the overall length is your pitch angle okay the tangential force element multiplied by the moment arm measured from the axis of rotation creates blade element torque as shown in the figure so like i said if this is your torque this tangential force once again this tangential force multiplied by the radius so d tau is equal to tangential force into radius so torque is equal to tangential force into radius so that force if you if you want to just measure the uh, tangential force tangential force is given by d tau by r okay so that is uh, I, I could say this as summary of this and next you have your blade selection criteria so what all the things that you need to consider when you are if you are a manufacturer uh, for an aircraft and you want to select a certain type of blade so what all things you need to know okay so propeller manufacturers offer propellers covering a range of diameters pitch values and solidities the choice of these parameters can depend on consideration other than the aerodynamics so importantly when you are trying to design or when you are trying to keep a propeller for an aircraft the first thing that you need to take into account is your diameter diameter of the propeller okay so the bigger the diameter the greater the greater the thrust produced okay the, the thrust produced is more but again because the diameter is big 
the consequence of having uh, greater thrust is the consequence of torque okay and the uh, velocity differences at different points on the blade okay so and pitch so first is your diameter the second parameter is your pitch because the pitch will determine the overall angle of attack and the helix angle which is actually the useful angle of how much of thrust can be produced apart from this you also have your aerodynamic considerations okay aerodynamically propeller should have higher efficiency and sufficient thrust for cruise and a high static thrust and smaller takeoff so desirable characteristics of a propeller would be for it to have higher efficiency so like we know uh, if you take any of the propellers for one constant speed there is maximum efficiency correct so that efficiency should be higher and sufficient thrust should be there to generate cruise and uh, high static thrust high thrust thrust is when you are when you are simply on the ground okay your, your aircraft is not moving so if you have high thr static thrust you will also have smaller takeoff okay these two requirements are easier to sa satisfy with an automatically variable pitch constant speed propeller a fixed pitch propeller is usually compromised between these two operating regimes so if you take if you take the the above points into consideration so let us take thrust or efficiency or high static thrust so if you have a constant speed propeller so like i said the uh, like we saw in different types of propeller the propeller will run at a constant speed but the uh, flight regime whatever you want to decide let us say you want to cruise you want to take off or you want to land that flight regime is uh, is 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 varied because you are able to change the pitch of the propeller or control different parameters by keeping at constant speed okay so that is the, uh, that you need not worry about it in a constant speed propeller but if you have a fixed fixed pitch propeller you'll have you'll have to compromise on some of the things because because uh, the operating regimes are different at different flight regimes okay in general propeller plates needs a certain amount of power to be turned at a certain number of revolutions per minute and given flight speed okay adding a third blade to a sec two blade propeller would increase the necessary power by 50% so uh, the overall uh, summary of this point is if if you have a two blade propeller if you are able to design that two blade propeller into a three blade i mean if you add another blade to that propeller and maintain all the aspects the power generated will now be increased by 50% but that is not the case if you go for a four blade propeller okay so only two blade can work but if you add another blade to it you are adding Uh, let's say if you if you are uh, if your two blade propeller is 100% efficient not efficient it is producing a thrust of some 100 units and you add another blade to it it can produce a power uh, a power of 150 units now okay so that is what this point is saying but know that if you add an uh, one more blade it will not increase like how i said because of the spacing problem that uh, s by c ratio will be less than unity and then everything goes down okay so the important parameters that you need to consider is the pitch diameter and number of blades okay there is a link that i'll leave for you you just go back and then uh, see how pitch and diameter and number of blade varies which i've already said co covered so far so because of your pitch you'll have your angle of attack and the helix angle which will decide the amount of thrust that you want and diameter so if your diameter is very huge you'll get a very huge uh, thrust but what you need to compensate for that i mean the drawback of having very huge diameter is you can get thrust but you'll have an increased torque and also you'll have an increased drag okay so number of blades if you have two blades you have you are very good and you are efficient if you have three blades your your efficiency is increased by some percent and the power is generated by 50% but that is not the case as you go forward if you take a four blade propeller it will not work the same okay